TV African News and thank you for always joining us. This is Africa Today. My name is Najima Dima, but first up headlines. Old Tax Pack finally opened after two years of closure. Ethiopia frees opposition leader is Kinda Nega. Hosts Cameroon are rallied from a goal down to age. Burkina Faso in opener. I will welcome once again now the news in detail. Government has finally reopened the old tax pack after two years of closure. The pack was initially closed off in March at the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic in order to curb its spread. The congestion that issued following the closure gave Kampala Capital City Authority a chance to redevelop the 50-year-old tax pack. We have more. Development works officially started on May 7, 2020, as drainage systems inside the park were improved, the parking area redeveloped and new security lights installed. The redevelopment, according to KCCA officials, cost 4.3 billion shillings. The reopening on Saturday, January 8, 2022, after nearly two years, was welcomed by passengers and taxi operators alike. Speaking at the official reopening, Minister for Kampala Minsa Kabanda urged taxi drivers and all operators to get vaccinated against COVID-19 to ensure continuity in their job. Before the closure in 2020, the old tax pack had at least 35 stages of different routes, but on reopening, some of these were moved to Chisenyi Bus Park in what officials say that it is intended to create more space. The reopening comes at a time when the country is staring at full reopening of the economy, starting Monday 10th January when students report back to school. Other sections of the economy are expected to be reopened after two weeks when students report back to school, according to President Jerem Seven. The Forum for Democratic Change, FDC, has asked school owners not to hike school fees and other requirements for parents as the economy is struggling to return back to normal. Now the poll reports. While addressing journalists at their party headquarters in Najana Nkumbi, the Deputy Secretary General Harold Kaija said it is not fair for schools to double school fees at such times when the economy is affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, hence asking school owners to allow parents pay half of the school fees. We will want to appeal to people, actually Ugandans managing schools, that reconsider your position and allow parents to pay at least half payments. The jam you should have accepted on the roads of Uganda is not the jam that we always see when schools are opening. Many parents have failed to mobilize the necessary resources aimed at taking back their children because as some of you in the media you have seen some of the lists are, are actually crazy. You find a school is asking children, uh, parents, to pay for loan fees, to pay for the moment fee, and you look at the sums and then you ask, in an economy that has been closed, why do you ask for those kind of sums? On the other hand, FDC has condemned a proposal by a section of members of the NRM to have the constitution amended and have the president elected by members of parliament calling upon Ugandans to stand up and reject this proposal. So we are calling upon the people of Uganda. It is high time you cause a transition. And the people of Uganda must not think that a power outside Uganda will come and help. People of, people of uh, Sudan did help themselves and caused the transition. People of, the, of DRC did the same. People of Tunisia, people of Algeria, people of Egypt, people of uh, Burkina Faso, People of, of Mali, people of, uh, of, Z of Zimbabwe have done the same and of course, course traditions. Kaija also called for the immediate release of one of their own and novelist Kakwenza Rukirawa Shaija, who was arrested over his repeated social media posts in which he abused President Museven and the first son, also the commander of land forces, Lieutenant General Mohozi Kaine Rugaba. So as a party, we demand for the unconditional release of our colleague and we only give 48 hours 
for the release of our colleague. Otherwise, we shall call upon the FDC membership to walk to whichever office where we think a quasar could be hidden. Or we shall also look for the office of General Mohozi and we will walk there to speak to him. But this kind of impunity must stop. Kakwenza was arrested on 28th December 2021 from his home in Jisasi by operatives from the Crime Intelligence Directorate and detained at an unknown place. Nalgo Muingo, Africa Today. The Higher Education Student Financing Board has today released a list of the first phase of the eighth cohort of the approved student loans beneficiaries for the academic year 2021-2022, targeting universities and tertiary institutions. We have more with Kachanchu. In his address to the media today, the 10th January 2022, the Minister of State for Higher Education, Honorable Dr. John Chrysostom Muyingo, said the government of Uganda, through the Higher Education Students Financing Board, has continued to support parents who find difficulties in raising school fees for their children to access higher education. The government of Uganda has opened up a landscape of higher education where up to date there are 10 public universities and 34 private universities and both private and public tertiary institutions mounting to 220 higher learning institutions in the country due to the good investment opportunities that have attracted private actors in the higher education sector enabling any students interested and qualifying for the higher education section to freely join. The Higher Education Student Financing Board has enabled 16 temporary online loan application support centers in all the country's four regions, which have been critical where all categories of applicants were able to apply. The minister further added that the scheme has registered great positive results like increase on the stock of scientists in the country, where in the last eight years the board has trained over 30,000 practitioners in various fields of the health sector. The first phase of the eighth cohort has seen a total number of 92 beneficiaries for the academic year 2021-2022. TV Africa News, Kachanchu Mutabazi reporting. Let's go for a quick break. We will be right back. <music> The journalist, blogger and founder of the Bauderas for Genuine Democracy Party was pardoned and released on Friday as Kinder Nega had been detained for over a year in a maximum security prison in the capital Addis Ababa. The release of Eskinda Nega was announced on Friday on the Facebook page of his political party, the Bauderas for Genuine Democracy. There, a picture showed the 52-year-old man posing with fist pumps outside the Kaliti prison with a colleague with whom he was detained. He had been imprisoned for over a year in the maximum security prison in Addis Ababa. The former blogger is one of several leading opposition figures who were jailed back in July 2020 after deadly protests in the capital and the surrounding Oromia region followed the murder of popular Oroma singer Hachalu Hundesa. His vocal activism had already earned him some time in prison. Other prominent figures including Jawal Mohammed, the media mogul turned opposition politician from the Oromo Federalist Congress were also pardoned. The news came a day after Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed issued a Christmas statement calling for national reconciliation. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa said the ruling party, the African National Congress, must work to regain popular support after being embroiled in corruption scandals and divided by bitter functional rivalries. Marking the ANC's 110th anniversary Saturday, Ramaphosa struck a somber note emphasizing that the party of Nelson Mandela, which helped South Africa to achieve democracy, has lost voter backing. Ramaphosa said that they must be forthright in recognizing 
and deal decisively with the reality that ANC structures are in a poor state, adding that many of them are focused on internal organizational conflicts, factionalism and furthering the self-interest of individual leaders rather than the aspirations of communities they are meant to serve. The anniversary event held in Polokwane in the northern Limpompo province comes days after a state-backed judicial investigation revealed how some of the party's top officials had benefited from corruption. The ANC is also sharply divided between those backing Ramaphosa, who is also president of the party, and those loyal to former president Jacob Zuma, who has been embroiled in legal battles since he left office in 2018. The African National Congress was founded in 1912 to oppose white minority rule and to campaign for black South Africans to have full democratic rights. The ANC came to power in 1994 when the country's first democratic elections were held and Mandela became the first black president. However, its support has declined in recent years and it received less than 50% of votes cast in local elections in October, its worst ever performance at the polls. Ramaphosa said many who supported the ANC had punished it by not voting. The ANC is said to hold its national elective conference later this year, where Ramaphosa is expected to seek a second term as the party's leader, but he faces significant opposition from those still loyal to Zuma. Pygmies who have been hunting in the Baka forests for about 5,000 years in Cameroon are being left homeless by logging and forest destruction. We have more. The rainforests inhabited by the pygmies are being rapidly depleted by timber production and mining. Integration efforts to settle the pygmies who are not allowed to live in or even enter the forests that have been turned into national parks are not succeeding. According to Venant Messi, a coordinator at Okoni area, every year 8 million hectares of forests are logged and threatened the way of life of the Baka, the pygmies in general, adding that if all this is cut, the Baka are doomed to lose their identity. Thousands of pygmies living in the rainforests of the Nomejo region of southern Cameroon near the border with Congo have been forcibly removed from their habitat for the timber trade. Diedone Tombombo, a local resident, said that they are linked to the forest, adding that it is their heritage where we can find all the species and all their food. Emile Elenga, who lives in the jungle, talked about the truck that picks forest products every day, which have destroyed the forest. The livelihoods of about 10,000 Baka pygmies in southeastern Cameroon are under threat, adding to a study in scientific reports by scientists from the Center for International Forestry Research, which shows that their available hunting areas is also in danger. A somber mood as the world mourns the death of Sidney Poitier, who has died at age 94. Poitier, who died Thursday night at his home in Los Angeles, achieved a mainstream popularity with a series of groundbreaking roles at a time of great racial tension in America in the 1950s and 1960s. Sidney Poita, who has died at age 94, was a pioneering black movie star who opened doors for racial minorities in film decades before the Oscar So White and Black Lives Matter movements. The trailblazing Thespanian became the first male black star nominated for the Academy Awards with 1950s The Defiant Ones and six years later was the first to win the Best Actor Oscar for his performance in Lilies of the Field. He balanced success with a sense of duty to choose projects that tackled by Gautry and stereotypes including his 1970 classics Guess Who's Coming to Dinner and In the Heat of the Night. Poeta also praised the visionary choices of handful of American producers, directors and studio bosses who were not afraid to stand up for the cause of equality despite the difficulties such as stance may have caused them. By coincidence, Poeta received his 2000 Honorary Oscar, the same night Washington won for the Best Actor, which was also the night Halle Berry became the first and only African-American Best Actress winner. In his acceptance speech, Washington paid a heartfelt tribute to Poeta, telling him that he will always be following in his footsteps.
Born in the southern U.S. state of Florida in 1927, where his tomato farmer father was selling his produce, young Sydney and his family moved back to the Bahamas, where he grew up in poverty. He had acted and featured in many movies, including but not limited to No Way Out, Blackboard Jungle, A Racing in the Sun, In the Heat of the Night, Steer Crazy, Ghost Dad, and Shoot to Kill. He was awarded the United States Presidential Medal of Freedom, the country's highest civilian honor by Barack Obama in 2009. According to Dominique Di Prima, a fan from Los Angeles, Sidon Poeta was the first male black actor to win an Oscar, adding that he was the first black leading man and was the one that they allowed into the space and carried that burden for decades alone. Poeta was married to his second wife Joanna since 1976 and had six children, as well as numerous grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Let's once again take a quick break, we will be right back. Africa News, the right to know. In our business news today, deep in the Sahara Desert, in the northwest African nation of Mauritania, lies the overseas city of Chinguet. Founded in the 11th century, the city stood at the crossroads of the old Trans Saharan trade routes. Along with Kamas, manuscripts from the Arab world were traded here, making Chinguet a center of learning. This desert is famous for its camel caravans, which in their heyday transported goods across North Africa. Cultural and social development took place around this trade, most significantly a large collection of manuscripts originating from Mauritania and across the Middle East. Today, the Trans-Saharan trade routes of old are no more, and the desert is doing its best to reclaim this city. And the manuscripts, which are part of the town and Mauritania's rich cultural heritage, are under threat from the elements. Saif Ahmed Mahmoud, the proprietor of the Ahmed Mahmoud Family Library, said that the collection began in 1699 and comprises over 700 manuscripts today. This rich literary cultural heritage originates from around the Arab world, the manuscripts covering subjects as diverse as religion, mathematics, literature and astronomy. In February 2021, leaders from five West African nations and France agreed to step up the fight against Islamic extremists in the Sahel region, which included Mauritania. The leaders also vowed to further strengthen a regional force known as the G5 Sahel Force that was launched in 2017. It is made up of soldiers from Mali, Burkina Faso, Chad, Niger and Mauritania who operate in cooperation with French troops. Mahmoud says the threat of terrorism in the past and now COVID has stemmed the flow of visitors in Chingweti, but tourists have started to trickle back. Chingweti is part of a UNESCO World Heritage Site which was inscribed in 1996. <laughs> In our health news today, just one day after the launching of the Africa Cup of Nations in Cameroon, our vaccination centers are packed. The vaccination campaign has accelerated tremendously because of the ongoing football tournament. Football fans are queuing to receive their job here in Yaounde and for good reasons, the vaccine is required to access the stadiums. To attend the matches, spectators must show a proof of vaccination and a negative PCR test for the coronavirus that is less than 72 hours old. The launching of the AFCON has convinced some of the people like Tatiana Dirani to get the job. 
Patrick Olama, a resident of Yaoundi and football soccer fan who was opposed to the vaccination, explained that he was really motivated this time to get vaccinated in order to attend the match and support the team. In the Central African country, the Ministry of Health estimated in late December that only 6% of the population was fully vaccinated. Up to now, a vast majority of 26 million Cameroonians has turned down the numerous invitations of the authorities to get the vaccine. The unhoped success of new campaign has surprised Dr. Lucien Mama, the head of vaccination center, when a big number of people asking for the vaccine. In our sports news today, Afghan 2021 hosts Cameroon recovered from a goal down to aid Burkina Faso during the official opening game in Group A of the 2021 Afghan finals at the Olembe Stadium in Yawonte City on Sunday, January 9, 2022. Vincent Ababeka scored a brace for the Indomitable Alliance, both well struck penalties. Kachancho reports. It was Burkina Faso's Gustavo Sengari who netted the opening goal of the championships in 24 minutes, a perfect drill disturb of skipper Bertrand Traore's inviting cross from the night. Traore turned villain when his tackle on Andre Frank Zambo Aguisa needed a lengthy review by video assistant referee to award the penalty. Abubakar shot on the left of the goalkeeper have Kofi who dived in the opposite direction on the right. The hosts get yet another penalty after Isof Dayo fouled defender Tolo Nuhu. One again, Abaka scored from 12 yards, this time striking the ball to the right of the goalkeeper who dived to his left. In the second half, a goal by Abaka to complete his hat trick was denied by VAR. Cameroon will return to action on Thursday against Sekafa region country Ethiopia. Before official opening match, there was a colorful opening ceremony attended by Cameroon head of state Paul Beer, FIFA president Gianni Infantino and Sekafa boss Patrice Motepe, alongside other federation heads including Uganda's Moses Hasim Magogo. The 2021 AFCON was delayed by a year after outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic in 2020 and was put in doubt last month as CAF considered cancelling the tournament last month. The second game witnessed Cape Verde beat Sekafa region representatives Ethiopia 1 nil. That was the news. Thank you for always keeping it to the Africa. Please do stay tuned to more programming coming your way.